Welcome to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. MotorWeek is made possible by TireRack.com, WeatherTech, Hum by Verizon, RockAuto.com, and State Farm. Here's your MotorWeek podcast host, John Davis. Thanks, Alec Webb. Welcome, everyone, to MotorWeek podcast number 188. And around our, I never can figure out what size, shape table this is. Our bent, keystone sort of bent, bent triangle. Bent triangle like table a de- here. Yeah, and, a depressed uh, triangle. Just kind of almost sagging. a Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. very good. It's very like good, a Zach. floppy pizza yeah. slice. In Studio C at MotorWeek headquarters. Let's start with Brian Robinson, our writer producer. Hey, thanks for the opportunity to be here. John. Oh, wow. So formal. Online content coordinator, <laughs> Greg Carlos. Here I am. Over the edge reporter, Zach Mescal. Hello. And video producer and editor, Joe Ligo. Greetings. Who is also the producer of the podcast. We have our normal slate of affairs, a lightning round, uh, a very common viewer question. Uh, That doesn't mean it's from a common viewer, but it's just a question we get a lot. But first, let's get to the cars. Okay. Uh, One of the biggest intros of the year, at least in volume, the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado full-size pickup truck. Greg, you had a chance to drive it. I think most of us have seen it. Sum it up for us. Uh, yeah, like you said, most people have seen it. And, um, you know, you get onto the internets and people are pretty much on one side or the other. It's a polarizing look, I think. Uh, you either love it or you hate it. Um, I think there's a lot going on in the front. But the good news is is that you can kind of uh, manufacture how you want your Silverado to look. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of different styles within there. You have RST, Trail Boss. LT, all, all the high country. There's a lot of different grill designs. Uh, but, yeah, I drove it out in Jackson Hole, um, which is in Wyoming, which is the most space I've ever seen. It's <laughs> literally – I stepped off the plane, and it was just an expanse of space. Right. It was incredible. Um, the truck is crazy quiet on the inside, and I've said it about a million different GM products now. They've got sound deadening just down to a T. It's pretty incredible. I mean, whether you're – we only drove the 5.3 and the 6.2 – and regardless of which one you're in, it was just really quiet. Ride and handling was good. Uh, that's not exactly what everybody wants in a pickup. The big thing is towing features, and this thing has a ton of new towing features, not just for um, for seasoned professionals, but for really amateurs because they found that a lot of people who get into a truck, they probably didn't tow very much before. There's a good chance that they don't even know how much their truck can tow and what it can do. So that's a big point of emphasis. They have cameras, sensors. They even have tutorials within the screen. That Does you can... it have the automatic backing uh, system with the trailers? I don't remember if it – because there were so many things thrown at me. I don't remember if they had the automatic backing, but they have like three different angles where you can look down and, and, and do it by yourself. See. Okay. And you can see it. Um, but they do have uh, one thing for professionals and people who have done it before – uh, you like to get out and check all your lights around the car or around the truck, and uh, normally you have to have two people in there. You know, hit the brake, hit this. Now you can actually have it go through a system, a set of lights that it will turn on, so you can get out. That's and good. Then it'll just go so, around. so it does like a cycle where it tests each exactly. light, and you just walk around yeah. the truck. That's and cool. it's stuff like that that nobody's really thought about, and we have the capability. And they just said, "Well, why not make it, it probably easier?" Capability. It probably didn't cost them any money. It's probably just like a two dollar well, piece of software that just blinks every light. Here's my question, though. I, When I saw the truck in Detroit, I was very impressed with all of the high technology the truck's got. I really think it just beats everybody else in the market. However, the majority of journalists got completely hung up on the new Ram 1500 and the big screen on the interior. And the Internet was almost instantly flooded with... Chevy didn't miss the boat. Uh, The Ram's going to eat its lunches. The interior is so much nicer. You've now experienced both of them. You know, there is some possibility that Ram could actually outsell Silverado if it's not uh, a home run. What do you think? Do you think they went far enough in the things that maybe people that aren't into trucks, uh, you know, real heavily, like the casual use buyer, uh, might expect? I think they I think they did go far enough and I think the people who are clamoring about more high tech 
are just looking at the big screen. That's all they were looking at. Yeah. It really is. Because there's a lot of substance in the Silverado, and I mentioned it in our first look at how it's – the screen is modest compared to the Ram, directly compared to the Ram, but everything is clear. It's easy to use. I've already talked about all the towing features. I mean, there's a ton inside. You can nitpick GM with their choice of materials inside and the way things look, but it certainly is not ugly. I wouldn't call it low-tech by any means. It's comfortable. There's uh, there's extra rear uh, leg room in the back, which is great for me. Uh, so to answer your question, I think they have certainly gone far enough. They probably just didn't package it in as pretty of a package as maybe the Ram did. Yeah. You know, I don't know too many people that are first-time full-size pickup truck buyers. Does anybody know them to the point of are they looking at for something different than what the traditional pickup truck buyer bought? I mean, are they just looking at the visual, like, I want to be part of this new club? Or, you know, any com- any comments? Hey, now that you mention it, that's a good point. I can't think of anybody who's on their first truck. Most, Most people I know have had at least two or three. Right. Yeah, or they've graduated from a smaller but truck. But I, I saw a story on the news the other night saying that people are even to the point now where they're trading in SUVs for pickup trucks. Oh, sure. Like it's, they said the truck sales are just unstoppable. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in the marketplace. Um, I think the Silverado is a technology uh, home run like you do. So, go ahead. Speaking on the technology, they also um, have updated engines. So they, they still have active fuel management, which if you remember that – is it can run on four cylinder? But it's now been mode. upgraded. It's a it, different system. They have now. two different systems yeah. now. Now it's dynamic fuel management, which is just a whole different box of worms. It's it's incredible what exactly is going on. They said it can actually run on two cylinders. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly going bank to bank like you're running V2 mode, but it's the way of the sequencing of the firing order and things like that. So anywhere between two and eight cylinders. And I drove it, and I had no idea what how many cylinders I was running on. You mentioned the front end. I thought it was terribly clever that they put those vents up front to actually channel brake air and reduce aerodynamics. To me, that was just very forward thinking, but you know whether it really amounts to much fuel economy wise. Yeah, a lot of uh, new engines coming out too. Later, they got the turbo mm-hmm. four coming out yeah. and yeah. Uh, diesel uh, six cylinder as well. So, yeah, so it's, didn't get to drive out of those. Yeah. Now, I had one question before we move on on the Trail Boss. I mean, how's that compare to the other off road uh, specific models, Ram Rebel and, and Ford Raptor? Where's I, know um, I saw not, you got some off-road yeah, action in. Uh, yeah, it was a short course, um, kind of catered to what the truck can can do. It's definitely not in uh, Raptor territory, uh, but it's the same kind of concept as like the Rebel, where you, you give it the off-road goodies, you make it look more aggressive, but it's not like full-on Raptor level. So yeah. definitely compare it to the Rebel, not so much the Raptor. It seemed to me just looking through the press stuff, it was your normal uh, LTZ off-road package. But with uh, better tires and, like, a two inches of lift. Yeah, and it's a factory lift, which is yeah. a big deal for some truck people. But, you know, given what they did with the Colorado, with that off-road package they've got, which I've completely forgotten the name of it ZR2. now. ZR2. ZR2, which, which is a very serious truck. I guess they could possibly do that if they wanted sure. to. Okay, let's move on to something totally different and, uh, in some ways, a throwback. The 2019 Ford Mustang Bullet. Zach, you're the guy that got behind the wheel. San Francisco. You, you, you weren't around Shocker. when the original Bullet made uh, motion picture history, but what did you think of the car? I think the car is awesome. It's it's very loud in sport mode and sport plus mode. And what the car is, is for those of you that don't know, the Bullet, you know, they they came out in 2001, then 2008, and then now we have the, the third one. This is the 50th anniversary of the Steve McQueen movie car called bullet and it took place in san francisco there was a huge um car chase and it may not have been the first car chase but it was the first very big grandest (laughs) cinematic thing that ever happened and you know the cars were flying through the um huge hills of san francisco i think one of the cars lost like 14 hubcaps in total in the uh in the whole chase but um that was the charger i think yeah, so they made a huge deal out of it. We were right next to the um, the Golden Gate Bridge is where we stayed, and they you know played the entire entire um, chase chase scene. They had the gentleman that owns the original '68 fastback that was in the movie there, and they also had the car there in San Francisco right next to the new one. So overall, just very cool. I mean, we got 
numerous pieces of the history and where we are now. And um, now we have the car. So it's essentially a Mustang GT with the premium package with extra goodies. Uh, it's got a cue ball shift knob. Uh, it's very high revving. Like I said, I think it sounds great. It's got tons of grip. Third gear is the puller. Um, couldn't get enough of that. 480 horsepower, 5 liter V8, and the car's good. Now, they did the 12, the, the 08 car, 08, 09, they made it over two model years, I guess. The 08 car, when we had it in here, we commented that it was probably the most cohesive Mustang. Everything worked perfectly together that we had ever driven. Now, you weren't around uh, here in those days. But would you characterize this car as more than just a trimmed-out GT? Uh, I mean, did you find that it, they took a lot of extra care with it? I mean, I personally had more fun in this car than I did either the Turbo or the GTs that we've had prior. Mm-hmm. And my dad owned a couple of these things growing up. And Sure, I think it's the best Mustang I've been in. The Magnaride suspension is phenomenal. I mean, driving through the city, I was like, very impressed hmm. with the optional magna ride i mean that is just so good um and then you know you have like my mode where you can toggle all your steering and throttle and exhaust preferences along with the four different exhaust modes so where we were i mean i woke up the in the morning at like five in the morning to try to go out and get some nice sunrise shots i don't want to wake everybody up so i threw it in the lowest exhaust setting and then once I got out and got on the road, I instantly threw it in sport. So that's one of the cool, one of my favorite features. It's got auto rev matching. Um, I might maybe like put a different clutch plate in for the clutch. That's just always been a, a bother of mine with these things if I had to really nitpick. But, uh, you know, people are going to argue, is it worth the extra money? It's just a Mustang GT and this and that. Well, you're, you're still getting more than, than It's all than retuned, though. Everything has been retuned. Exactly, Yeah. So no air under the tires, huh? Didn't put any air to get a little... They told us specifically the <laughs> night before to not jump them when we were hanging out. I bet That might did. have been my bad from the last bullet intro in San Fran. We got okay. some shots. Did you look that up on YouTube? Yeah, and they said, I mean, they already got the cops called on them the day before. So they were telling us, like, seriously, please don't get air. Because I know a couple of us were, were 100% going to try. So uh, it, was, it was surely a lot of fun driving so. around there. Yeah. Let's go on to another throwback, the uh, 2019 Nissan 370Z Nismo. I mean, this this particular generation of 370 or Z car has been around <laughs> for 10 <laughs> years. 10 years with relatively little changes except a little bit in the engine and a little bit in the trim. Again, a lot of you at this table were on, you know, the show staff when the uh, when this car was brand, brand, brand new. What do you think? Did you think it's really long in the tooth? Why would Nissan put extra effort into the car at this time? What do you the think? Ga- the gauge cluster looks like it's from 2009. Well, it, <laughs> There's it a is. Lot that look, makes it look like it's from 2009. Oh. I mean, it's still a fun car to drive, but like, even so when too. it came out, it, it was old. It seemed old when it first came out, so it's uh, that hasn't improved. But it's still just a simple back to basics. Not a electro- a lot of a lot of electronics. Uh, fun to drive car. I really enjoyed that, and and I remember we rode back in the day. It said, you know, this was we thought drivers uh, driver centric. This was the best Z they had probably done since the original right i i went back and watched the road test from the the we did it roebling in like 2009 2010 mm-hmm. or something and one of the lines in the test said we almost it said we almost like it more than the gtr because it doesn't feel like it's all computer video game controlled and it i didn't defi- make as much clinking noises too when you're out oh God, yeah. Yeah. i i definitely yeah. felt that driving it just on the street that it felt natural you're kind of like wow the, the next z will probably not feel like this and, and there is a new one coming but i figure the reason that you know their pr machines getting behind this car now is there's a new Toyota Supra coming, so you know they're this this market's going to actually heat up a little bit. This sports car, sport coupe, whatever you want to call it. But I, I like the throwback feel of it. It was the first Z I'd driven, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. But I definitely you can feel its age. It was my first Z as well, and it was everything because uh, Benny had been kind of talking up Zs, and I wanted to get in one. It was everything I wanted it to be. The seating position was great. Um, clutch shifter feel was all the way i needed it to be 
Um, I will admit to being a little bit off put by it. Like the, the initial presentation when you get in, considering what we've been driving in just the last few years, you're like, oh, God, I, I, this, is, this is old. <laughs> but then you just start driving it and you forget about it. So You realize that's not what yeah, matters. It's the, the substance right. of the and car. The, the Nismo treatment that we had might be a little bit much on the outside for me. I probably wouldn't spec it like that. Uh, but, yeah, for just the car to get out and drive, it's, it doesn't get – in this day and age, it doesn't get any more, like, visceral and just raw than probably the, the 370. There's a bunch of people that came up to me at, you know, gas stations or even at parking or uh, at red lights just like, oh, going nuts. And I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's the Nismo. I got a thumbs up from a C7 owner. Okay. <laughs> Because they know it's different. I mean, it's you, you don't know, see a new a one every over, day. over the top or whatnot. But everyone knows it's something special. And I mean, for me, this was kind of one of those refreshing cars, um, like I mentioned here and there, where it, it is just that raw feel, and it does a good job of catching you with all the electric uh, doodads on. And then if you want to turn them off, the car still has a lot of grip, but you can kick it out if you want to have some fun in it. And I think overall, it's a it's a Really nice, just solid. Um, would I want to daily drive it? I don't know, but no, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, my wife is um, exposed to a lot of cars, like we all are, and sometimes when I bring home uh, a two-door sport car, sport coupe, you know, she looks at it like, you know, here we are for another uncomfortable ride. She really got into it. She just loved it. She thought <laughs> it was really, really cool. It brought back a lot of memories from when we used to own a couple of sports cars. Brian, did you? Uh, any comments? No, you really, no, nothing to add. Did you did you enjoy it? Did it did it remind you how old it was? Or? I didn't even spend a whole lot of time in it, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, it doesn't feel that different than what it always has. No, it didn't. I wanted I wanted to ask what was everybody's thoughts on the rev matching thing? That was the first manual I drove. I thought it. I thought it, I, it worked really well. They were one of the first ones that had yes, that when were. that car originally came out. It was I was shocked that, that was it big news. It was pretty mind blowing when it came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people have it now, but I don't, it, I don't still works. Care for it particularly like driving on the street, but when you're driving on the track and you're trying to put down times, it's <laughs> there's really nothing quicker uh, than unless you're amazing at heel towing. And it was easy to. I mean, one switch you could turn it off, so you didn't have to have it. I wound up doing that because yeah. I was trying to heel tow with it, even on. Yeah public well, streets of course and i like it of course you were i do like it going up when you know you see the light turn yellow or something if i'm in fourth and i'd put it in third let it go down 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 and put it in second and then i touch the brakes yeah. i always do my best to not touch the brakes so um just remember a clutch plate is more expensive than a brake job yes, it is. <laughs> all right all right moving on our yeah, lightning the, the round rx might disagree with you as well <laughs> <laughs> each panelist gets uh, 30 seconds to weigh in on a trending topic and sometimes we worry about that, and sometimes we don't. <laughs> well, guess what, folks? Here we are at the beginning of Season 38 of Motor Weeks, coming up very soon on your local public TV stations and also on Velocity. All right, let's go around the table. What are you most excited about as far as anything for this new season? Sub, uh, subjects you're going to cover, cars you're going to drive. What what do you think's ahead for our 30th season, Brian? Uh, let me guess. Start it's as with good as you. mine. I really uh, it's a need to know basis. I don't even know what's coming up. So. <laughs> yeah, that show uh, schedule's under lock and key. Yeah, cars come in, we test them, and I write about them, and we move on. But how about trends? I know we got a I know we got a Ferrari heading uh, coming soon. I live in GT2 RS trends. I'm sure it'll be the usual autonomous driving and EVs. Can't say I'm looking forward to either one of those. That and much. SUVs, but uh, yeah. I'll ding you out early. Thank you. Joe, how about you? Uh, this might seem simple and not for all the enthusiasts out there, but the show gets a new look this season, new graphics. As a video editor, that's exciting to me right. to get a freshened look and uh, some some different kind of ways that we'll have the horsepower and numbers and stuff on screen. So it's always nice to tweak stuff and keep stuff looking fresh. So that's one thing I'm looking forward to, and hopefully the viewers at home will like it too. Zach, you've got some interesting segments coming up, but anything – really get you excited about either one you you're in process or think you're going to do sure yeah i mean a couple of the car shows are just raw you know natural shows that you know i'm just pumped to be there in they're the first not place traditional. And they're not now so i mean that that'll definitely be something exciting um both for you guys to hear and see you know if you can't make it um luckily we get to travel all around i think this season i'd be pretty amped if we got to 
drive some of the cars we've been hearing about for a while that still aren't here. There's a lot of stuff coming. Supra. I'm looking at you, Toyota. Mm-hmm. Greg, anything else? Well, that was it. Supra. That was a big, <laughs> I'm sick of hearing about the that, Supra. That was in, that's been in my head since you mentioned uh, they, it. They, they've they've the teased Z, it as long as they yeah, teased well, the, the BRZ. Well, the Z4 should be coming out today or tomorrow in production for him. Yeah, well, it was Monterey it, week it, right it, now. Monterey week. It's, all right, it's been announced. You know, one of the things that is creeping into our business, uh, I mean, we all end up driving home an SUV almost three out of five nights, it seems, a week. And it, they are taking over the business. But there's something else happening, too, and that is they're increasingly being given some kind of a sporty nature, you know, tightening up the suspension, putting more electronic uh, driving aids on them. It, it tells me that somewhere in the, the uh, engineering halls of these companies, people still want to get some enjoyment out of driving. I don't know if it's a flash in the pan. I'm not sure most people will appreciate it. But at least when you get behind the wheel, you're not getting behind some big, dumb-feeling, you know, uh, uh, soccer, kid's soccer mobile. You know, I don't know. So, well, yeah, I, sport, I'm glad to see there's some, there's some SUVs. progress there, and it's not just all trims. You know? So I think we've got an exciting year. There's a lot to cover. We really don't know what we're going to cover yet, except that if it's new uh, and it's out there and you can buy it, you'll see it on Motor Week. And you can ding me on that if you like, Joe. <laughs> ding him, Joe. Viewer questions. Okay. Um, and this isn't one from any one particular But we viewer. get it a lot. This is from the collective – Yes, our I, viewers love cars for the most part. They think many of us have the best jobs in the world, and they want to know how they can become a an automotive journalist and maybe be be one of us. So, what advice? Let's go around the table. Would you give someone that wants to be an automotive writer or a journalist? Brian, uh, huh. start a blog and. Start talking about cars, and it won't be long. You'll get more followers than us, and the car companies will be sending you cars. <laughs> if it only was that simple, oh, everybody God. would do it. Joe, you're on the video end of things. I tell people over and over again when I meet them at parties or whatever, it's like 70% of my job is not driving cars. It's other things that go into making a TV show. You know, so if you want to, if you want to work on a TV show about cars, you have to be able to work in TV. Whether that's editing video, shooting video, writing for video, a lot of our job is not just going out and you know racing around in cars. A lot of it is actual work to put the show together. But what about video? I mean, almost every car site now and blog has a video element to it. Any uh, suggestions on what makes a good car video and a bad one? Uh, I mean, people want to hear the cars. They want to hear the motors revving and tire noise and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, just a big part of it is is just trying to make the point to people that want to work in this field that it's not always about driving and having fun. A lot of it is how can you convey all that to a viewer? Uh, Storyteller. Through, or reading. Yeah. Storyteller. Telling right. story. So. Showing and not telling. Yeah, I mean – um, like Brian said, you just got to put yourself out there. There's so many ways to be heard now between Twitter, um, Instagram, and YouTube is a big one now. Um, but not to burst anybody's bubble, it's not, I, this job is more than it seems. It's not just driving cars and saying, I know how to drive. I can drive better than other people, so put me on television. It's really hard. We all write, and we all – go on camera and, it, and I can tell you it's so much harder than you think it is and you know I, I would just say make sure when if you're serious about it write 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 learn how to tell stories and learn how to to speak to somebody clearly and concisely that's excellent advice because people don't realize but the written word uh, at least for us and most people in this business seriously is still paramount over even pictures what do you think? Do something else. <laughs> <laughs> that in, could, be, like that could be the soundest advice we've given. Stay but. in school. Go work for IT or something. Buy your own 911. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one in every group. Now, I got to tell you, Zach here is a career television kid. Uh, he came to us with a long list of television credentials. So uh, it's a tough road to hoe. Uh, you're not going to get rich at it. But uh, no. if you're successful... You'll have a, a lot of fun. 
Yeah, there's numerous different ways that you can take this stuff now, especially with YouTube around. I mean, you it's, got so it's many pretty easy, incredible. You can get into it a lot easier than we, most of us, could. You can. Yeah. Just yeah. try to do something different, um, give the people what they want to see. The good news is it's possible. Like, again, back to Brian said, there are stories within our industry. We see them on every trip we go on. Mm-hmm. People who just started a blog and talking about cars that they had access to are now getting press cars. So it's not out of the question. Just you can even do a road it. test of your Subaru and send it to us. And who knows? You, you might end up working I remember here that. one day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I hope that answers the question that you probably didn't ask, but you might have been wondering about. One more thing before we wrap up this uh, edition of our podcast. Uh, anything on anyone's minds? Any rant and raves? I'll go for a rave this time. Okay. I'll uh, plug our long-term Honda Odyssey. Took it to Ocean City, Maryland this last week. Uh, it's about a three-hour drive from where I live. And I ended up just finding myself putting more and more stuff into it because <laughs> I just had the room. I said, well, I'll throw the golf clubs in. You never know when you got to go golfing. Sure, we'll get another case of water. So, yeah, I mean, I I thoroughly enjoyed driving it. It's so easy to drive around, just around town. I mean, it's nimble. Um, It's actually pretty quick on the highway. I mean, you can really get up and pass people if you have to, and I like passing people. Um, Yeah, and there's just, like, a ton of storage spaces that you just find randomly. I've tweeted about it, like, three times now. There's one specific storage space in the back that can just fit everything. It'll fit like a football. It'll fit like a plant. It'll Is that like fit... one of the behind the real Yeah, just wheel random. Nooks. Yeah, it looks like milk mm-hmm. jug sized. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can fit a milk jug, like anything. So it's so useful. I, if I had one thing to gripe about, it's that our seats, the second row seats, are you have to pull them out. They can be kind of heavy. heavy. You know, in comparison to a Pacific. It, you, it lets you remind you how old you're getting. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Heavy. Kudos to our long-term odyssey. I think uh, I'm probably not the only one who's been no. getting a lot of use out of, of it. a lot of trips this summer in it. Well, that's a good place to end up our podcast number 188 here at Motor Week Central. I want to thank Brian Robinson, Greg Carlos, Zach Maskell, and Joe Ligo. Thank you for watching Motor Week, for watching our podcast and our listening to us and going online and following us on social media, all of those things. Uh, Be sure to catch us on your local public television station and also weekly on Velocity. If you can't find us, shame on you, but go to motorweek.org. Pull down the uh, tab at the top, and you'll see listings for everywhere that we show up every week. For all of us at Motor Week, thanks very much for being a part of us, and we'll see and talk to you soon. You've been listening to the podcast of Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine. Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com, WeatherTech, Hum by Verizon, RockAuto.com, and State Farm. For additional information on podcasts, videos, and showtimes, visit our website at motorweek.org. And watch Motor Week, television's longest-running automotive magazine series, each week on your local PBS station.